Hello, everyone. My name is Elisa Ewan. I'm the Assistant Director of Alumni Relations here at Teachers College. And I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today for the Alumni Career Development Webinar Series featuring Antia Allen. The webinar series covers a range of career topics and includes speakers from a variety of backgrounds. This series, co-sponsored by the TC Office of Career Services and the Office of Alumni Relations, Videos of past webinars are available on our website at www.tc.edu slash alumni slash career webinars. Today, alumna Antia Allen presents how to get out of the adjunct zone. Antia is a graduate of TC's Adult Learning and Leadership Program. She is a psychology instructor with nearly 15 years of experience and the owner of Allen Ivy Prep Consulting a unique service that specializes in career preparation and professional development for those wishing to become faculty in higher education. So please welcome with me, Antia Allen. Welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your, your lives to listen to this webinar. I really appreciate it. Um, now there's gonna be times throughout the webinar where I ask you for your thoughts, and when I do so, um, just feel free to use the chat to everyone speaker. Um, there will be times for, for questions at the end. Um, so if you do have a question as we go through, you can always just jot that question down and you know share it with me at the end and I'll be happy to answer. All right, so I know you thought that this was just going to be some tips on how to make it, um, how to make that transition from adjunct to full-time faculty but I'm going to do a little bit more than that. I'm going to tell you sort of a love story. Um, and this love story is about an adjunct um, who is being hired by an institution. And for this new adjunct, it is loved at first sight. Um, although she's super excited um, and she wants, she wants to still be smart about this and patient. So she will see this semester or academic year, however long she's been hired, um, of teaching as a time to sort of date the uh, institution. So, um, but with the understanding that she is an adjunct. And so she and institution are not exclusive. Um, that means that the institution is free to still review other applicants. And she as an adjunct is free to go check out other institutions to see if they interest her more than this one. Um, but a major part of dating is taking the time to figure out if this institution is the one for you, the one you are willing to commit to as a full-time faculty. Um, this gives you the opportunity to interview the institution. So the adjunct is going to take the time to get to know the institution. Um, they can research the institution. And by research, I mean, you know, finding out things like what culture of the institution, what's their mission, what are their values, um, do their mission and values align with the adjunct's mission and values or beliefs and values. Um, other ways they can get to know the institution is by attending maybe students' athletic events um, or even commencement. Um, I think getting to attend these events is a good way to see, you know, how the institution feels about their students. Um, other things you might want to explore is whether this is an institution that is research focused or more of a student centered teaching institution. Um, and we're even finding out if there is an emphasis on service to the college. Um, or you know, even service to the community. Now, another layer of getting to know the institution is meeting friends and family. Um, and so, of course, since we are talking about a institution of higher learning, um, the friends and family are the faculty. Now, you can learn a lot about a person from their friends and family, and I'm sure that many of you would agree with that. And from meeting their friends and family, you can also decide 
if that's a group of people you want to be a part of or not. Uh, and so the same goes for being an adjunct. You can learn a lot from networking with faculty and staff. And um, I want to, like, I honestly want to see what you all think as far as, you know, networking. What are some ways that someone who is an adjunct faculty can network with the faculty and staff? Um, so this is that, this is your opportunity to share in that chat to everyone section. I'm going to be looking out to see what people come up with. So Sunita, um, she and uh, chatted LinkedIn as a way to network and meet people. All right, LinkedIn is an excellent way for sure. Any other ideas? All right, so I don't want to hold this too long, so we're just going to keep moving. So I'll give you a few of mine. Um, but really, just try to get involved in any way you possibly can. So um, if the university is saying we need volunteers for our food pantry, um, then make sure you volunteer. Um, sometimes adjuncts are able to advise clubs. Um, sometimes they aren't. Now, if you're an adjunct and you aren't able to advise like a student club or a student organization, then another thing that you can do is maybe, you know, find out who is the advisor of a club that you're interested in. So I teach psychology. So if I'm an adjunct, I might try to find out who has the psychology club on this campus, try to partner with them to see, you know, I won't be able to co-advise, but I can at least volunteer um, at the events. That gives me an opportunity to not only get to know this faculty better, I get to understand what it's like to advise a club and I get to get, um, you know, more interactions with the students outside of just that class time. Um, now, I actually asked some of my colleagues and friends who are full-time and some of them actually started off as adjuncts. And I told them I was doing this webinar and I asked them for some, for some advice they would give to adjuncts um, as ways to get involved. And things they came up with were get involved with committees and evidence you care about the students. Also, get to know the roles that staff and faculty have within the department and elsewhere on campus. Um, and I understand that there may be, you know, there may be some requirements around committees depending on the institution. They may say, well, if you're not full time, you can't be on a committee. But there may be other times where you may, maybe even an ad hoc committee, you may be able to, you know, to be a part of that. Um, so not, can't stress it enough, go above and beyond to find opportunities um, to meet your fellow, you know, faculty members. So you took the time um, to get to know the institution and you feel like the faculty and staff are people you wouldn't mind being stuck with for the rest of your teaching career. Well, Make sure you are at your personal best. And I've broken this down into different areas that you can focus on when trying to show um, this institution what you have to offer. And so the first one is demeanor. Um, and obviously, just to kind of to rewind a little bit, when you go through this list, this is going to vary from person to person, just based on personality anyway. Um, so these are just kind of like general ideas. So as far as demeanor, which I think is really important, uh, be friendly, uh, be respectful, always remain professional. Um, advice I got from a colleague um, when I, I talked about doing this webinar was be positive. And believe me as an adjunct, because um, I was an adjunct for many years um, at different institutions. And I remember having one million and one complaints about um, not having an office, getting stuck with teaching classes that nobody else wanted to teach. Um, and, you know, I'm not even going to get into the pay, right? So I had I had complaints, but, you know, you don't want to be that person who's constantly complaining to your colleagues because then 
you come off as someone who looks bitter, right? And so, and I and I'm just a firm believer that when you when you're in a situation and you start to um, become really bitter and it starts to come off and, and come out to anybody who sits still long enough to listen to you, it's probably time to leave and probably time to move on um, from that situation, whether that be a professional or other type of um, relationship. Um, now, other advice that I received um, from my colleagues was to be a team member, which is connected to the next one, which is flexibility. Um, so, you know, sometimes your department chair or coordinator may ask, hey, can you teach an 8 a.m. class on a Saturday morning? Or they might say, we have four faculty out this week with the flu. Can you cover any or all of their classes? Um, they might ask you to teach an online course and maybe you haven't taught an online course before, but they say, you know, it would be a big help if you did this. Now, all of those things are not just showing that you are a flexible person, but they're also showing that you're a team member. You're somebody who's willing to jump in when you are needed. Um, and that kind of leads me to the next one, which is conscientiousness. Being someone who is reliable and also responsible. Um, so showing up to your class on time and making sure that if you need to cancel class, you do so in whatever the procedure is of the school, you don't just cancel class because you know you feel like it and then don't let anybody know that you cancel class. Not that anybody on this call would do that anyway. Um, but I think one of the, the huge ones uh, as an adjunct is you wanna ensure that you meet any deadline. And I'm sure many of us know the biggest deadline is at the end of the semester and that is submitting your final grades on time. So things like that show conscientiousness. Now, the next area is classroom observations. Um, usually there is a point in time when someone, either a colleague, a department chair, a dean, comes in to observe your class. You should already be an awesome professor because um, you were hired, but make sure that the day they come in, that's the day you are shining brighter than usual. This type of thing um, usually results in like some type of report or write up where they give you feedback. And you know, you never know, you may be able to use that feedback from them, obviously to improve, but you also, it might be if it's like a glowing review of how wonderful you were, you might wanna use that, you know, later on when it's time to apply for a full-time position. Um, now the next section is research. Now, even if you are not at an institution that is, no, even if, I'm sorry, even if you are at an institution that is known as a teaching institution, that does not um, mean that you don't have to publish, right? Publishing is still in your best interest, even if you are at, even if you're not at a, a research institution, even if the pressure is not on to do so. Um, one colleague who I asked to offer advice to adjunct said, write and publish like your life depends on it. Your career trajectory certainly does. Specifically establish a research team that will help you get publications up so that you can transition into a tenure track position. Um, so again, just stressing the importance of research. All right, the next one is professional development. So webinars like this one, um, attending conferences, and if you're not full time, I totally understand that you probably won't have, um, won't receive, I'm sorry, reimbursement for conferences. But that doesn't mean that you can't, you know, find conferences or webinars that are free. Um, other ways that you can develop yourself professionally are to take graduate courses. You don't have to start a whole new degree. Maybe you can just, start, you know, take a few relevant courses. Or maybe you do want to pursue a terminal degree. Um, you know, depending on the area that you're in, a terminal degree might actually make you uh, more desirable to institutions. All right, so um, another way you can develop your, your professionally, I'm sorry, is to join professional organizations and professional associations uh, that are relevant to your field. And when you do so, don't just be a member, be an active member, have, serve, an, serve a role, like have a leadership role of some sort. Um, 
that always looks better on like a CV or, you know, in a cover letter. Um, now, going back to advice um, from my colleagues, two adjuncts who wanted to become full time. Um, one said, work hard to improve teaching skills. And one way they suggested that um, this can be done was to shadow several different faculty members to see what they're doing in their classroom. Also seek feedback from multiple sources about ways to improve. And multiple sources obviously can be, you know, your colleagues in, within your department. It also can be, you know, speaking to your dean or your, debar your department chair. Um, some other, some other uh, advice, and I thought this, this advice was wonderful, was infuse yourself into the college. Volunteer, work additional contracts if possible, um, and additional contracts, what they meant by that was tutoring or advising. Um, and be so much a part of that college fabric that you become indispensable. Um, and I mean, and, and I, in one part that they really wanted to stress was just because you're part time doesn't mean you can't do things like, you know, host workshops on campus or work in other areas of the college. All right. So the big day is coming. We've heard that this institution is ready to commit. They are hiring and you have already decided that you want to take this opportunity to get out of the adjunct zone and show them that you are the one. Now, you already know you're the one. It's just time to remind them of that. So you're going to do that through your application, your CV, your cover letter, your teaching demonstration, and your interview. Now, I do want to give you a quick side note. Um, as I was preparing for this webinar, I realized that each of these bullets could be a webinar all by themselves because there's so much information to know. So I do want to let you know that I'm just going to give you a few tips within each kind of you know subcategory. So if you have any questions at the end um, about something that maybe I didn't I didn't cover, then please feel free to ask at the end. I'm I'm happy to answer. All right. Now back to the love story. In general, when it comes to any of these applications, CV cover letter and so on, um, don't ever assume, well, we've been dating for a while, so this institution knows what I have to offer. Um, but that's because that's why I said you have to remind them. Act as if they know nothing and tell them everything. Because when they are making their choice of someone to commit to, they will be looking at each of you side by side because they have to be fair. Now let's start with the application. Fill it out completely and never, ever, 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 ever type CCV as a response. I know filling out applications can be long and tedious at times, um, but it's worth it to do it correctly. Now some search committees use that application as their screening tool. So if all you have in those sections is CCV and not your actual qualifications, you've already eliminated yourself. Now, if you fill out your application correctly, then the next step is completing your CV and submitting a glowing CV. Um, now, remember when you were meeting their friends and family and getting involved in institution, um, whether that was through volunteering or committee work or conducting workshops, advising, publishing, all of those things need to be in your CV. Um, make sure you section each thing off to show clearly, like, this is why I'm the best fit for this position. This is why I'm the one. So have a section for teaching experience. Have another section for service and affiliations where you'll put that, you know, volunteering you know, at different events and committee work you've done. Do another section for presentations um, to show what type of presentations you've done and to show that you have done presentations. Um, and, you know, if, you, if you've done any, have another section for research experience. Now, you don't have to put every job you've ever had on your CV. More than likely, the application asked you for like your last 10 years of experience anyway. So, they know all the, place you, the places you've worked. On your CV, you can put a section and label it related professional experience. 
So if this is a psychology teaching position and you know the emphasis is on something like developmental psychology, then include your experience as a director of a youth program. You don't have to include your experience as a cashier at Toys R Us for five years. Great experience. I'm sure there's tons of transferable skills from that position, but we want to let them see what's relevant um, and what makes you, again, the one for this position. I'm going to move on to the cover letter. The cover letter is where you get to build on your CV. So you want to discuss your accomplishments. You want to give them information about your teaching approach. Um, maybe talk about technology that you've used in your classroom or how you've implemented technology in your classroom. Discuss any work you've done with your colleagues, um, research, or again, maybe co-advising that, that club and helping out with different events. Oh, and I always like to add something about what my student evaluations usually say, because then that lets them know this is, this is how his or her students feel about her, right, or him. Um, so again, use that cover letter to build on your CV. Now, the next thing is your teaching demonstration. Teaching demonstration. I've been on quite a few um, search committees, and believe it or not, I feel like this is the part that is the most difficult for people. Um, now, remember when you got that feedback from those classroom observations? I talked about the classroom observations. Um, and the time you spent shadowing faculty. Well, you have to look at this teaching demonstration for this interview. You have to look at that as a one night only performance. So you're going to use all that feedback you received to make this the biggest and best teaching demonstration you've ever done in your life. And the key part of a teaching demonstration is making it engaging. Make it interesting. Don't put people to sleep. You know, and the best way to make it engaging is to get them involved. Have the search committee do something. Because remember, you're demonstrating what you would actually do in your classroom. So you are treating the committee or the panel as your actual students. Um, which leads me to the next one. Um, actually teach. I know that sounds really, really silly. And I'm in no way trying to be condescending or anything like that. But what some people will do is if they will just walk you through it. Well, if I were going to teach a class on this subject, this is what I would do. And then I would do this, and then I would do that, and then I would show them this. No, you have to actually teach, teach it, you know. And it might feel awkward because obviously it's not a, a classroom full of students, but remember, you're just you're just acting it out, you're just performing. Um, make it unforgettable, make it as unforgettable as possible. And the last part of showing them that you're the one is the interview. In that interview, um, well, before you even get to actually being in the interview, make sure you're flexible when it comes to the scheduling because you do have an entire committee that has to like kind of fit their schedule together to meet you during this one time on this one day. So if you are someone who has a lot of other things going on and no time to make it to the interview, that doesn't look that great. Um, you want to be considerate of people's time and you want to show that you are, you know, willing again and flexible. But when you're in the room, um, it can be really intimidating when an interview, but, you know, try to relax and answer what is being asked. Now, if a question is long and confusing, because they can be, ask for clarification. I think it's so much better to ask for clarification um, and answer the question correctly than to not understand the question and then answer. Give a really detailed answer, but to the wrong question, pretty much. Um, so just make sure you get that clarification so you can answer correctly. And, you know, be confident. Don't be arrogant. We, You are wonderful. Believe me, you are wonderful, and they're going to see that for themselves. But, you know, just have, have a good balance with showing confidence. Um, because they do have other options, and you don't want to do anything to kind of put people off. Now. One thing I wanted to point out was that some people don't make it from that application CV cover letter section to being invited for a teaching demonstration interview. And so, um, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. But if you have made it this far and you've done all those things, 
And we know that, you know, there have been times when you walk out of an interview and you're like, oh, I know I nailed it. That was the best interview ever. They loved me. They thought I was great. Uh, this one, one of them was smiling at me and making great eye contact. So I know that person was sold. And I mean, you are just on top of the world. Now, obviously, this this whole section could have one or two outcomes. They could they could have really thought you were great and you could be the one and you are now out of the adjunct zone and you're a full-time faculty member. But there's another way it could go. They could choose somebody else. And obviously that happens. Um, and it's sad and it's frustrating and you're left wondering what you did wrong and why didn't they see you as someone worthy of a commitment. Um, but, you know, at this point, you have to make a decision. You stick around hoping that one day they will recognize your greatness and make you full time and make that commitment, or do you follow your friend's advice? And you all know what type of advice friends give after heartbreak. They'll say things like, you can do so much better, or they didn't deserve you. Or my personal favorite, I didn't want to say anything before, but I never liked them anyway. So if you follow your friend's advice, you break up, you move on, um, but in a mutually respectful way because you do need a reference, right? Um, I'm, and I'm not suggesting, I do wanna kind of put a disclaimer, I'm not suggesting um, that you quit your job if you're an adjunct, but it's important to know when something is just not working. So if you have applied several times at this institution and haven't received any interview, or if you've interviewed several times and you've never received an offer, then I don't know if people remember that movie that was pretty much based on a book, but they may not be that into you, all right? And it's time to move on. And, but here's what's great. You have been preparing throughout that semester, throughout that academic year. Um, you've been building your CV, your cover letter, You've been, you know, developing yourself professionally and growing so much. So that means that, you know, when you meet the right institution, you'll be ready. So I do not want to leave, you know, you with the with the end of a sad story. So this is a love story. It's going to end beautifully. Don't worry. So the adjunct is going to tailor her CV and cover letter because now this is a these are this is a new institution. So she can't use the same old, you know cover letter that she used for the other one. She's got to tailor her cover letter now and CV for, CV for these new institutions, and she's going to apply elsewhere. And eventually, she'll find her perfect match. And the perfect match, I mean, is obviously her full-time faculty position, and then she's out of the adjunct zone. Now, if you don't mind, I wanted to practice a little bit with you to see what you got out of this, uh, this webinar. And so I'm going to run through three scenarios with you. Um, and again, respond in the chat to everyone second using that feature. So I want you to tell me in each of these scenarios, what went wrong? So we're gonna start with Leo. Leo's been an adjunct at Timber University for two years. He's attended every athletic event held at the university. He doesn't know any of his colleagues in the department, but students love his teaching style. The last time Leo took part in a professional development activity was probably two years ago. Leo hasn't been involved in any research and hasn't published anything, but he doesn't see the point of doing so. This is a teaching institution. Leo applies for the full-time position and is not invited for an interview. What went wrong? Leo sounds great. I don't understand what went wrong. So I want you to tell me in the chat, what do you think went wrong with Leo? So Caroline wrote failure to network. Mm hmm Sunita wrote didn't publish. That's right. Right. Anyone else have any suggestions? Sunita also wrote he's not friendly. All right, not friendly. Got that. Oh, not friendly with colleagues. Okay. 
All I'm right. going to say, oh, and Car Caroline and I both say that he needs to show greater interest in professional development. Yes. It's been two years and he's been there for two years. So he hasn't done any professional development during this two years. Great job. You got everything. All right, let's move on to the next one. Kim. Now, Kim's been an adjunct at Timber University for eight years. Um, and there are some people who are adjuncts for long periods of time because maybe they're not interested in having a full-time position, but then there's some others who really wanted to be full-time for all eight years. So just kind of keeping that in mind. Now, she's volunteered consistently at university events. Her colleagues see her as someone they can rely on if they need coverage. Um, Kim students have nothing but good things to say about her teaching approach. Her CV and cover letter were revised by a professional service. Um, Kim applies for a full-time position and is, and is invited for an interview. For her teaching demo, she walks the search committee through how she would teach a course on counseling. She provides a handout of an activity she would complete with her students. Kim is not offered the position. Now, once again, I think Kim sounds like she did a wonderful job. I don't understand what went wrong. Can you tell me in the chat feature what went wrong with Kim here? Caroline says that she should have actually taught her demo. Mm -hmm. Not just describe it. Any other suggestions? Well, you got it. That was that is the one. So I'm sorry, my highlighter is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> my line is very crooked. Uh, but that is the section where the response is. Um, we, I said it, when you do your teaching demonstration, do your teach, like actually demonstrate your teaching. Don't tell us what you would do. So that's where Kim went wrong in that scenario. Thank you. Great job with that one. Okay, last one. And then the test is over. Jamie, Jamie's been an adjunct at Timber University for four years. She won an award for excellence in teaching, voted on by students only. Um, Jamie's not an advisor of a club, but volunteers at student events often um, has been an active member of professional organization and over the course of four years jamie has had several articles published in reputable journals jamie has applied for a full-time faculty position three times at the current institution each time has been invited to interview now each time jamie has given a stellar interview and an unforgettable teaching demonstration but has never received an offer what went wrong Again, use the chat feature to let me know. So it seems like the chat function isn't working, but the questions pane is. So, <laughs> okay. um, oh, no worries. Uh, Caroline just. Um, sent a chat and said, this ha just happened sometimes. There might have just been a brighter superstar in the picture. Exactly. I mean, Jamie sounds awesome. There's no question about it. Has done everything possible. And I mean, I hate to say it, this might be one of those situations where maybe Jamie needs to find a place to find another place to shine, right? Find another place that's going to commit because obviously a great candidate. All right. So that brings me to the end. Thank you so much. Does anybody have any questions? And so you can send those questions through the question pane, um, or you can send me a chat privately, and I'll just read them. Of course, if you have any questions that you would ask, you want would like to ask NT it. Um, directly, the next slide she'll have her contact information, so you can send her an email and things like that. Oh, so Caroline has a question for you, Antia. Can you address okay. the importance of a PhD? Ooh, okay. Um, here's the interesting thing about that. In some institutions, they will 
require. So when you see the job description, you already know that you need a PhD. If you don't have a PhD, don't even bother to apply. It will be a waste of time. Um, but there are, I have to say, there are other institutions where you can be hired with a master's. But when it comes to that time for like tenure and promotion, um, you may be able to get tenure without a I mean, without a PhD, but when it comes to becoming a full professor, you do have to have um, a doctorate of some sort in a obviously relevant field, um, relevant or related, I mean, field um, to become a full professor. So it does control, you know, sometimes your options out there, and it also controls how far you can go in certain institutions. Great question. So Janice has a question. What is the recommended wait time before moving on and pursuing full-time work at other institutions? I'm afraid to answer that one. Um, you know, it's interesting because I've seen people who, you know, have stayed five, six, ten years, and eventually their time came. Um, and they were so, you know, in love, and I, and I hate to use those words, but really what it is, they were so in love with that institution and so connected that, you know, they were willing to wait. Um, but generally, I would say, you know, if you've done everything you need to do and you've, and you've built up all those skills, I wouldn't probably say more than two or three years, especially if you, now if, and when I, I want to preface that by saying, if they've been hiring throughout that time. Sometimes there hasn't been a full-time position that's come available, you know, during that time. Then, you know, you might stay a little longer. Um, but if they've been, you know, actively hiring for full-time positions in your area, I wouldn't stay longer than, you know, two, three years. Any other questions? Thank you. That was a great one. Um, so Sunita had a question in regards to the scenarios regarding okay. qualification. Full-time jobs usually require a doctorate degree, and on the application, they want us to put our interests, research interests. So I was mm -hmm. wondering if you can elaborate a little bit more in terms of the application process in regards to this to the research okay so sometimes um they will ask for research interest now you can if there is a section on the application itself for research interest obviously you can utilize that section but if there isn't a section then you should add a um a section to your cv for research interest and sometimes it's combined it'll be teaching interest and research interest so that they already know what those interests are. So that's a good place to highlight it. And if you want to enforce it more or build on it, um, you can discuss it more in your cover letter, your research interests. Does that answer your question? I'm sorry, you're not able to answer <laughs> if I answered your question. I hope I did. I think so. Does anyone else have any questions that they would like to send me so I can ask Antia? We'll just wait for a few. and see if anything else pops up. Oh, Caroline just asked, um, as we are adjuncts making very little money, can you address your financial situation a little more? Like how to best navigate this? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I think, you know, just um, going back to the advice that was given from a colleague of, um, you know, looking into contract work that may be already at the institution. So, again, you are, you know, having the opportunity to network more within the institution and also building, you know, a little bit of finances at the same time. Um, because sometimes they will ask for, you know, advising advisors or um, even directors of certain programs or things like that. So you, so you're still involved in the institution and you're you're still able to be an adjunct, especially if you aren't teaching several classes. Um, 
but you're also, you know, doing other things within the institution that actually are going to help you look a lot better when it, when you choose to apply either there or somewhere else. But I totally understand the uh, the financial crunch. Great. Does anyone else have any other questions? Please feel free to send them via the question pane or through the chat function. I'll wait just for a little bit just to make sure we don't have any more questions. Caroline says thank you, by the way, and Tia. Oh, you're welcome. All right, so it looks like we do not have any more questions. All right, well, thank you so very much. I really appreciate you all sharing your evening with me. Um, if you have any more questions for me, like more specific questions to your specific situation or CV or anything like that, um, you can email me, allenivyprep at gmail.com. Um, I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, I'm everywhere. Um, and you can visit my website to learn more about um, faculty prep, career prep services. I have an awesome team at LMA Prep Consulting. Um, there's Justin Stewart, Dr. Jason Lee James Jr., and Lisa Ballard. They, they are my team. We work together, and we help put you in a, a good space when you're ready to um, apply for those, those full-time teaching positions. So definitely visit our site. Thank you again. Well, thank you so much, Antia. We appreciate you taking this time to share your expertise with the TC community. The video of this presentation will be available on our website. Again, that address is www.tc.edu slash alumni slash career webinars. Please visit our website for more information about our monthly webinars and upcoming events. Thank you again for all of you for joining us and we hope you have a wonderful evening. Thank you again. Bye.